Hello, viewers and friends. Once again, we want to thank God for a great day given to us. And I bless the name of the Lord for all of us. And I'm praying that by today's message, God will use it to bless your life and put everything that was wrong in your life right. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, the last teaching on deliverance for blood guiltiness, I did not complete when I was teaching on environmental bondage. So I feel it's good to do what is right very well. We know that the earth cannot be subtracted from the punishment, and we knew that the earth has actually been given an order to spew out the land, the earth, the world we live is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So to actually bear the consequences of this is what I call environmental bondage. It means you cannot subtract the divine orders given by God to the earth, the divine orders, instruction, commands, you know, on the earth to do this to that, whoever does this. So that cannot be subtracted by now, we all know. But do you know that somebody like King David, he was a great man of God. He was a great king. But to show you how God cannot change his position when it has to do with blood crime, blood stains, blood criminality, blood guiltiness. God took a very strong stand against David, who had been a faithful warrior, who had been obeying God, who had been succeeding by the name of God, but since most of what God wanted him to do had to do with bloodshed, there were certain spiritual things that God could not allow him to do. When we look at 1 Kings chapter 8, in verse 60, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Wonderful. That all the people of the earth, whether you are in UK, Canada, Africa, Asia, Arab, wherever you say you are, US, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Now, all those living on earth must know because everything about your existence on earth is recorded and the earth is bound to respond according to your contribution to the earth. So in, in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 22 of Proverbs chapter 2, he says, But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. So if you do wicked things to people, even when those people do not pray, for you, against you. The earth had already been mandated. That is a fixture in the spirit arena. It has already been ordered that the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. And however that comes, there are various ways of getting that done. And the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. This is not the, according to the cry, according to the prayers of those you offended or you committed the crime against. This is what the earth is bound to do because somebody offended. Because somebody offended. In Isaiah 24, 5 and 6, it says, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because, because they have transgressed their laws, they have changed the ordinance, 
they've broken the everlasting covenant. Now, all blood crimes are crimes against the heavens and the earth. And the inhabitants of the earth cannot commit blood crime and cover it and change location and become a better person when they have not actually taken the due process to get things sorted out by God in order to gain freedom. So verse 6 says, Therefore has the cause, which cause? So there is a cause already existing. So had the cause devoured the earth. So to them, nothing will come out of the earth for them. And they that dwell therein are what? Desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are what? Bent and a few men left. Some homes, yeah. Some homes, no man again. Some few, and they are very weak, limpy, you know, not looking well, health financially, and they cannot be believed. They cannot be accepted. So there are such homes, such families, we see people like that. So, in essence, the earth is bound. The earth is the environmental bondage that blood crime casts on the dwellers and offenders that are still on earth. Now, when we look at First Chronicles chapter 22, I'll be reading from verses 7 to 9. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly. Can you see why David was restrained from building the Lord a house? Was he faithful? Yes. Was he loved by God? Yes. Did God say that David is his portion? Yes. But because he shed blood abundantly, he succeeded in all the wars against the enemies, which would have said it's a good thing, it's a right thing, as was commanded by God. God is not blaming him for that. But he has shed so much blood. So because of that, and has made great wars, thou shalt not build a house unto my name for pleasing the Lord for doing what God asked him to do because his work had to do with blood. So he was disqualified from building the Lord a house because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. So come to look at it. Was David wrong? He killed Goliath. <laughs> and we, 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 we say, wow, what a great thing. The whole Israel broke out into singing and rejoicing. That even made King Saul to become angry. But that was not all. Everyone that waged war with David failed. David triumphed over them all. In the name of the Lord, he succeeded. But, but, beauty. Even though he succeeded in all of that, blood was shed. Blood were shed. So because of that, he was disqualified from building the Lord a house. He said, you shed much blood in my sight. That means I was the one that actually, you know, supported you, helped you, I was with you, and you did all that. Humanly is successful venture and mission. In verse 9, Behold, a son shall be born to thee. Wow. Who shall be a man of rest, a man of peace, a man that will not fight war. How many wars did Solomon fight? None. He fought no war. And for 80 years, the whole world rested. Israel rested. So somebody that had not shed blood is qualified to build the Lord a house. So who shall be a man of rest? And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, 
and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Brethren, this was what the Lord said, and it greatly happened so. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 8, I'll be looking at verses 17, 18, and 19. And it was in the heart of David, my father, this is Solomon saying, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the, for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, we are asked, it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name. Thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. Now I want to ask these pastors, I understand some pastors, they are church building, they put human beings, put human skull, some push people in there alive and lay the foundation in the night. What are you building? You say it's the house of the Lord. What of the blood you shed before you said you were now born again? How did you settle the matter of the blood? Somebody said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, are you in Christ Jesus more than David? Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest what? Wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has exalted thee above thy fellows. Now, we said that was a prophetic utterance, but literally it was meant for David. David. And Jesus Christ is come after David and is a king after the throne of David. So, when we look at the Davidic royal order, Jesus came in after that. Now, when somebody says, I'm born again, because I'm born again, I cannot deal with deliverance, or I cannot seek for deliverance. You are cheating yourself out. The earth will vomit you. All the darkness of this world will come your way, and whatever the devil wishes you, wills for you, goes through, and you will be hot. The earth itself finally will spew you out as one that is good for nothing, profane. It was in their hearts of a noble man like King David to build the Lord a house. But because he waged so much war and discomfited his enemies so much, so far, the Lord will not allow him to be the one to build him a house. In Psalm 9, verse 12, when he maketh inquisition for blood. When God is to bless Helen Pabio, when God is to bless you by whatever name you are called, when God is to bless you, God will first check, check your life as it has to do with blood so that he can remember them to punish you or to exonerate you. So, when God is inquiring, when God is to bless, he searches, he looks for. When he is to judge, the same thing. When he is to punish, the same thing. When he makes inquisition for blood. If God makes inquisition for blood for you to answer the many prayers you've cried unto him, what is he going to see? He's going to see Blood sins that were never dealt with. Blood crimes that you have closed your mind against. Is that what he's going to see? Somebody's child you raped and she had a child. You said it's not your child. You claim to be born again. You don't do anything about it. Is that what God is going to see? Somebody that you had put out of order. Have you ever gone back to ask, those people I raped, those people I did this to, how has their life been? What of the innocent child that didn't know anything, didn't even know you, didn't know that you were the one? Do you think the earth will forgive you? 
by just saying you are born again or by surrendering your life to Jesus, by surrendering your life to Jesus, your sins were forgiven. Then the things that were in dark that are still within your environment, you must show it up. You must, like Abraham did. Abraham had trespassed. Then came Isaac. So Abraham sorted out Ishmael. He settled Ishmael, and Ishmael was okay. Even after the death of Sarah, Abraham went and married a woman called Keturah. And Keturah bore Abraham children in Genesis chapter 25. Keturah had five sons. Abraham settled all of them and sent them away from Isaac. So why don't you like to settle things, even when it is obvious in the scriptures? Why are you segmenting and dividing and subtracting the gospel so that you can find a place to cover yourself? No! All of us are guilty. So if we deal with us, you deal with your own. So when he made inquisition for blood, he remembered them. He remembered them. So God will remember. He forgetted not the cry of the humble. When I taught you, I said, blood tracks you, follows you, pursues you, Christ, just like the blood of Abel. What did the blood of Abel do? When God asked him, where is your, am I the keeper of my blood? Ah, what a fantastic answer he gave to God. But the blood was saying a different thing. The writer of the Hebrews is telling us about the blood of the New Testament that is speaking better things than the blood of Abel. So the blood of those murdered are speaking things not good at all. And the blood of Jesus Christ saves you from sin as it saves you from sin. Come and deal with the sin of abomination with repercussion is carried from one generation to the other, facing Daniel faced is. David faced is. They all confess the sins of their fathers. I'm not going to go into that because a time will come that we will take time to teach on ancestral bondage. But I'm just saying, it is always in the mind of God, it is always part of the workings of God to inquire about blood, about an individual, about a home, about a family, about a household, about a compound, about a tribal people, their attitude with blood. And when he does that, it is either for blessing or for causes, depending on what is there. Even when we look at Genesis chapter 9 verse 5, he says, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. Somebody said, if I cut my hand, can't I lick the blood? As what? Is it food? You are eating blood. Is it your blood? Yes. So, but surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man at the hand of every man's brother husband wife cousin uncle add anything there will i require the life of man how many abortions did you commit oh well, let me even ask you pastor that is building a church for the lord have you dealt with your blood your past blood crimes or are you covering them and still continuing because what you have not confessed will overpower you. That day you were asking God to forgive you. Did you remember that you did not remember to talk about blood crimes? You were saying everything. Oh, I am a sinner. Forgive me. A wretched sinner. I am a wretched. Now you have come to know that there were sins of idolatry. There were sins of blood criminality that cannot exclude you and allow you to enjoy life because the earth has command concerning it. So deal with it. So that the land will be at rest. If David 
God dealt with it on account of David that was doing things righteously. He will wear the cloak. Should I pursue after? And God will say, pursue after. So he, he, he's always obeying God. Should I? And God will say, yes, go. So it was God that gave him the right to pursue east, the enemies of the Jews. And he did well. But when it came to spirituality, building the Lord a house where God will stay, where God will pass through and bless the people, God will not want the church to stand to be accused. Satan, the arch enemy of the church, has written a lot against the church. Now, it is by the writings of the enemy. Satan will say, this is a bloody church. This is a bloody church. Just like Babylon was known to be a bloody city. If you look at the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 1, woe to the bloody city. So woe to that bloody family. Woe to that bloody house. So in environmental bondage, God is looking at the village, the city, the town, the country, the nation, the continent, the household, and the individual. So woe to the bloody city. It is a cause set by God. It cannot be removed. So that woe goes to any family that is bloody. Any person that is a family head. So David had children. And we see, we see how certain reactions. Look at Absalom. Look at David's daughter. Tama. She was raped. He says, it is full of lies and robbery. It's a city of blood. Whoever they targeted, they got it. The prey departed not. Now, don't you have conscience that what you did, whether you raped a girl or you raped a boy, some housemates, some big mature women sent to gun, take care of young, young boys, begin to drag the small boys into nonsense that as they keep growing, they, are, they start remembering, ah, that auntie, that's what this auntie used to do with me. And that, begin, that thing begins to torment that child. God will make inquisition and you will be held accountable for it. So what about it? So what will you do? Woe to the bloody city. There is nobody that can be excluded from blood crime. Blood crime requires that you acknowledge it when you have become saved you acknowledge it and you begin to act on it and I'm here to lead you through the process on how to deal with blood criminality in a situation that you feel you are guilty please don't suffer yourself by trying to make yourself look good when you had never consciously dealt with blood crimes. The Lord will make inquisition and he will require that blood from you. And to require that blood from you, the earth will begin to work against you in life, in health, in everything about life and family. Thank you. We will continue with the next episode. And I just want to believe God that you got it today. This is not a teaching of one day. But I want to say that if you have to get back to me, which I will be very glad for you to get back to me, then you can send me an email on my email address, helenopai at yahoo.com. You can also like my page on Facebook, Lady Apostle Helen Opabio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide. Follow us on Instagram, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide, to receive updates and notifications on new videos. Once again, God bless you. And I want you to know that I am praying for you always. And the Lord will keep you till next teaching. In Jesus' name, amen.